Today marks the 31st anniversary of the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. On the 2nd of August 1990, led by then-President Saddam Hussein, Iraqi forces attacked and occupied neighboring Kuwait. Panic ensued on the international energy market as global oil supplies came under threat. The price of crude doubled over the span of a few weeks. Iraqi forces were eventually forced to retreat, but they left a lasting impact on the region's politics and its oil production. Mobin Nasser reports. It was a clear message to the world. As the international community called on Iraq to end its occupation of Kuwait, Iraqi President Saddam Hussein was visiting his troops on the front line, telling them to stay entrenched. By then, they had seized control of their neighbor's immense oil reserves after invading Kuwait on August 2, 1990. Iraq was going through a very difficult economic time after the, the, after the Iraq-Iran war, and Saddam Hussein thought that uh, the West was using, and the United States, of course, was, were using the Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates in order to flood the, the, the market with oil and bringing the price of oil down. Before the war, Iraq and Kuwait were major oil exporters. Collectively, they were producing 4.3 million barrels of oil a day. That fell to almost zero after the invasion, driving international oil prices up from $21 a barrel at the end of July to $28 by August 6th. As the occupation continued and with a military response from the rest of the world imminent, prices rallied higher, peaking at $46 a barrel in mid-October. Then, in January 1991, a US-led coalition launched Operation Desert Storm to drive the occupying forces out. We go back to our country. They prevailed after 43 days of aerial bombardment and ground attacks, but the conflict left behind a trail of devastation. The retreating Iraqi army set fire to Kuwaiti oil wells and much of Iraq's infrastructure, including its oil refineries and pipelines, were badly damaged. While Kuwait managed to put out the fires and resume production to 2 million barrels per day within a few months, Iraq was hit with international sanctions, which made the lives of already impoverished Iraqis even harder. Nothing is on our side. Prices are shooting up and the people are suffering. As long as the embargo is imposed upon us, we are witnessing a state of recession which is worsening. Hussein remained in power, eventually being toppled after the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003. His decision to invade Kuwait is widely considered the beginning of the end of his reign. But the plight of Iraqis remained unaddressed as the country spiraled into years of civil war after Hussein's demise. In recent times, the country's been rebuilding its energy infrastructure. That's boosted oil output to 4.4 million barrels per day and reduced the country's reliance on imported refined petroleum products. But the events of August 2, 1990 continue to take a toll on Iraq's economy and the living standards of its people. Mubi Nasser, TRT World. Let's get more on this now with independent energy analyst Neil Atkinson. He joins us now from Paris. Welcome to the program, Neil. Really good to have you on. Now, we heard there some really good historical background on that oil price shock of 1990. And we did see oil prices essentially double in the span of a few weeks and months because of the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. But we know it was less severe than the shock that we saw in 73 and 79. But what lessons did we learn from that event, the sequence of events that eventually led to the first Gulf War? Why was oil so central to those events? Well, of course, back in those days, uh, oil had a much or, or an even bigger role in the global energy economy than it does today, uh, as, as well as oil being used in transport, uh, which, of course, it still is. It was also very heavily used around the world uh, in power generation, which is not so much the case today. Uh, and, of course, back then in uh, 1990, uh, when the Iraqis invaded Kuwait, uh, we didn't have the enormous oil production which we see today from the United States. Now, which isn't to say that when the invasion took place, 
the world was uh, in a tight oil market because actually it wasn't. Uh, but even so, uh, the invasion that did take place in 1990 threatened to place under the control of Saddam Hussein unless he was ejected from Kuwait. He would have been in control of essentially 25 percent of global oil reserves and a very high uh, proportion of uh, global oil production. Uh, and in a country which is uh, obviously was a, a closed society, a police state, uh, that was clearly not a, a situation that the international community uh, could live with. And, of course, the United Nations came together, created the coalition, which eventually expelled Saddam Hussein, uh, sorry, from Kuwait. But, of course, that was only the beginning of the suffering of the Iraqi people, which your, uh, your film package alluded to a moment ago. Mm. Now, if we fast forward to today, the world still is dependent on oil, but not as dependent as it was uh, some 30 years ago. As you pointed out, there is a push to develop more renewable sources of, of energy in, in order to tackle the climate crisis. As you say, we have increased shale production in the US uh, as well. Is oil less likely to be a trigger for things like conflict and war today? Well, we saw in uh, September, was it September 2019, with the attacks on the Abqaiq uh, facility in Saudi Arabia, which threatened briefly to uh, take offline about 6 million barrels a day of supplies from Saudi Arabia. Uh, the price reaction at that time, although initially it was quite severe, was relatively muted considering the scale of uh, the attack on Saudi Arabia. And the reason for that was that at that particular time, demand was beginning to, to weaken, but uh, there was significant spare production capacity available in one or two other countries outside of Saudi Arabia. There were very high oil stocks, including strategic stocks maintained under the supervision of the International Energy Agency. And of course, we had United States oil production at very high levels and capable of growing. So uh, oil, uh, uh, still important, uh, and of course, the the question we're all trying to deal with as we move to a, a zero carbon world over the next decades is how important oil will be for how long? OK, independent energy analyst Neil Atkinson, we'll have to leave it there. But thank you so much for sharing your analysis with us on Money Talks.